Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Oil and Gas General User Training Webinar. I'm really excited about all the great content that we have today. So without further ado, let's jump in. I wanted to start off by stating about the Ledgeview Partners Oil and Gas Experts. Josh Phillips and myself, Michael Dodd. Anytime that you call in or send us an email at CRM support, we are the ones that will be answering you. And we love all the great questions that we get, and we are always happy to help our wonderful customers. So we look forward to hearing from you. I want to start off by talking about our agenda today. We're going to start off with general navigation. I'm going to talk about the upper blue ribbon bar uh, in CRM, which gives you so many great navigation efficiencies, and talk about global search and where advanced find is. Then we're going to move into recommended personal, personal settings. So setting the default screen, which is a section within CRM where if you click the home page, it will bring you back to your selected default screen, or default section, excuse me. And then there's a, an item called send on behalf check mark. It's a very important back end system that will affect you, but you may not see it in day to day use. Then I'm going to talk about enter, um, the importance of entering full and complete data. This is a huge thing that you'll hear me stress over and over again about all the different information that CRM asks for and where that information applies to. Then we're going to talk about a day in the life of a salesperson. We're going to talk about the sales process, which is a lead to an opportunity. Then we're going to talk about the quotes in that section within the opportunity and a really great feature called scope of work. The activities that you can set for an opportunity or for an account or contact. And then we're going to talk about the account screen because one really great feature of the sales process, when you qualify a lead, it creates an account and a contact without any work from you. Within the account screen, we're going to talk about the competitor's share of wallet and the estimated days between orders. Two really great features that um, in my previous life as a salesperson, I really wish I had access to these, so I'm really excited to show these items to you. Then we're going to jump into the contact screen, and then we're going to jump into order history and how that affects you as a salesperson. Data at your fingertips is our next section. Really what that is is all the data reporting methods that are available to you. I'll go over all the different options, why you would use them and why you wouldn't use them, and then we're going to go into a few of them more in depth. We're going to go into reports, advanced finds or views, and charts in a more in-depth look. And don't worry, we are going to go through some demos for these, so you'll be able to see how the system works and also be able to take this back um, in your daily work and apply these different methodologies. Then we're going to talk about going mobile. We all know today's world is very mobile. We're all on the road. We're all moving and doing things, and we need access to our system at all times. So one of, our, one of my favorite features is the iPad app and the ability to utilize that app, especially while on the road. We're going to talk about syncing your iPad app and some best practices. And then if you ever do run into an issue, sending the logs to us here at CRM Support. Then we're going to finish off our training with an Outlook versus Web Client look. It's going to show you some of the efficiencies and inefficiencies between the two. So without further ado, let's jump into getting started in general navigation. I'm going to bring us over here to our CRM. Again, it's just going to take a minute for it to load. All right, and as you can see here, we're in dashboards. But one great thing to note, no matter where I am in CRM, this upper blue ribbon is always going to be there. So these navigation efficiencies that I'm going to show you are available on every screen you enter in, this, in CRM. We're going to start here with Microsoft Dynamics CRM. This is your home page. 
So this is where you click on this information and it brings you to your default screen. And by screen, I mean your section and then the entity you selected. So in my case, it's workplace and dashboards. These three lines is your drop down main menu. This is going to show you all the different sections. So workplace, sales, service. The main ones that um, we as salespeople are going to focus on is workplace and sales. This is where you're going to spend the most amount of your time. So if I click into sales, it's going to bring up all the entities. And as you can see here, this is all on one screen. No scrolling. This was a great upgrade when um, we upgraded the oil and gas product from 2015 to 2015 update one. This was a great enhancement, one of my favorites. So everything's on one screen, way more efficient, way more time savings. So as you can see here, all your different entities are in here, opportunities, accounts, contacts. And if you're already in Workplace, you can just drop down. You know that's where you want to be. You can click the little drop down next to it and then navigate to one of the other entities. So reports or activities. And if you realize, hey, I want to stay in dashboards, you can just click on your drop down, little drop down carrot next to dashboards. It's going to show, the, show you the recently viewed dashboards. And then you can click right to them. One of my favorite features of our blue ribbon bar is the recently viewed. So if you click on this little clock icon, it's going to bring up your recent records and your recent views. Now you might be asking, why is this important? If you're working on an opportunity at the end of the day and it's, it's cumbersome, it's taking a little bit long to get through it and you need to get home for the day. When you come back in the next day, you want to continue working on it. All you have to do is log into CRM, click on your recently viewed items, click right on your opportunity and you go right back into it and you continue working. So instead of needing to, get, needing to navigate through the system, it's two clicks to get back to where you were. And it will also show your recent views. So if you know you want to go to opportunities, instead of clicking on sales and then the drop down to opportunities, just click on your recent viewed, click on my open opportunities, and it's going to bring you right to that view. At CRM, and especially here at Ledger Partners and myself, I am all about saving you guys as many clicks as possible, making this system work the best for you and showing you how you can make it work the best for you. This quick create button right here, it's the new, it's a little plus sign. If you click your plus sign, this gives you the ability to create any new record that you'd like. So account, contact, opportunity, these are all right here in the, in the quick create ability. So if a customer calls in, you know they're not a current customer, you just simply click the plus sign, click the account, going to bring up your quick create form and all you have to do is enter as much information in here as possible. It is thinking a little bit right now because it is bringing up a condensed version of the account form so sometimes that can take a little bit of time to bring up and it's going to pull in some information. It's going to pull in you as the owner and since it's new there isn't going to be an account number so it's going to start with CRM account only. So it's going to pre-populate some information for you. And all you have to do is put in the account name, industry, and main phone number. Because those are required fields to create this account. We highly recommend putting in the ship to address if the customer provides that to you. Because the more information you put in the CRM, the more you can get out of it. When you're ready to close it, just simply click Save. Now Global Search. Say a customer does call in and you're not sure if they've ordered from you in the past or if they're, they're an account that just hasn't contacted you guys in a while. So it's Mike's Towing that called in. So if you type in Mike, all right, I don't see any Mike's Towing as an account, so I simply click the plus sign. Again, it brings up our quick create form and it starts out our account name with Mike. So all I got to do is add in Towing and I'm ready to go. Again, we're all about saving time because we know as salespeople your day is very, very busy and you're all about getting that next deal. So 
we want to make sure that you're focused on what's most important. And same thing with contacts. If you were looking for a contact, you can create a new contact here if you happen to not see them in the list. Again, as you, as you can see, this is on every screen. This blue ribbon bar, every single screen is open to. And our advanced find button, it looks like a, a data sheet with a little filter icon next to it. That's your advanced find button. We're going to go over that in a little bit more detail later when we get into data at your fingertips. Next, we're going to talk about recommended personal options. I'm going to go back into CRM and I'm going to show you how to do all of this, but I wanted to touch on what we're going to be talking about. With personal options, these are items that I'm, I recommend setting as it's going to make your day more efficient and get the most out of the CRM. As you heard me talk about before, the home page, that Microsoft Dynamics CRM, when you click on that, it brings you to a set section. And to do that, all you're doing, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, is the default, you're setting the default pane, which is workplace, sales, service, it's that first section of the drop down from your main menu. Your default tab is the entities within that section. So if you click on sales, you're going to have, you can choose from dashboards, opportunities, accounts, contacts. That way, whenever you click on that home button, it's going to bring you to sales opportunities, if that's what you selected for your default home page. Then we're also going to talk about increasing your records per page. So we're going to jump back into CRM. I'm going to show you how to navigate to personal options. See up here in the upper right is your name and then your organization name underneath. Right next to it is a gear icon. So if you click on the gear and then click options, it's going to bring up a personal options set, setting. It's going to have a whole bunch of different tabs and options. You default to start in the general tab, and that's where we want to stay. So your default pane, again, that's the workplace sales service section that we're choosing. In this case, we're going to choose sales. My default tab, I actually want to make sure that I can pull myself back to dashboards because I have a lot of great dashboards that I want to be able to look at, so I want to make sure it's pulling me back to that information. So if I go in here and I look for dashboards, and actually at this point it's not showing, so we're going to go with opportunities. We're going to set a default pane and default tab to sales, opportunities, and then our next section is records per page. So this defaults to 50. And I know a lot of you have a ton of accounts. And the last thing you want to do is click that arrow button about 20 times to be able to get through all your accounts. So if you change this to 250, it will update all your views. Every time you need to scroll, it's going to show 250 records per page. It's just going to save you a lot of time. The next item I want to show you in here is email. So if you click on the email tab, this is a button that isn't going to change things noticeably in front of you in CRM, but it does do a lot behind the scenes. It allows fuel pricing notifications to go out, for instance. So it allows an email to be sent on your behalf. That way, if the system is sending out an email that is putting it in your name, this button allows it to do that. So you want to make sure that you make that check mark and then click OK. Once you click OK, it's going to do a full refresh of CRM, which is very important because it's taking all those changes and applying them. So now if we click on Microsoft Dynamics CRM, our home page, as you can see here, we're in the global search. So when I click this, it's going to pull me over to our home screen, which I apologize for the technical difficulty. I clicked opportunities, but it was actually, dashboards was hidden on behind that, that's the reason that it came to dashboards. So I apologize for that confusion. We're going to jump back into our PowerPoint. And I know you've already heard me say this once. You'll probably hear, hear me say it 20 more times through the presentation. You'll be, you'll be sick of me saying it. But the importance of entering full and complete data, it is extremely important. This next section that we're going into 
is the what I call the meat and potatoes of CRM. It's the sales process. It's your leads, your opportunities, your accounts, your contacts, and the activities associated to them. It's very, very important information. That's why you want to put as much clean, correct data as you can that you know into CRM. So I'm sure you all know the rule growing up. If you didn't finish your dinner, you don't get dessert. If the sales process is the meat and potatoes of CRM, the reports, charts, dashboards, advanced fine, that's your dessert. That's the portion where you really get into the data and really be able to set some analytics and increase those sales by understanding your customer's patterns. So that's why the importance of full and complete data is so important. Next, we're going to jump into a day in the life of a salesperson. We're going to start off with the sales process. I'm actually going to walk you through this process in CRM, but before I do that, I want to go through the process to help you visually understand exactly what it's doing. So if you have a customer that visits a trade show and they give you your contact information, you want to enter them as a lead. You create that lead. You talk to the customer and you determine, yes, they are a great candidate for us to sell them. So I'm going to qualify them as a lead. Once I do that, it's going to create an account with all the information from that lead, from the company name and address and various other information you put into the lead. It's going to create a contact. So that contact that you talk to is not no longer a lead. They are now a contact in CRM. It automatically creates that for you. And then as we all know, when you hit qualify, it pulls you right to an opportunity. And it pulls you into the qualify stage. The qualify stage is where you're, you've qualified the customer and you want to set that first appointment to really talk to them about their needs and solutions, which is your next step. The needs and solutions you're going to understand are wants, their needs, what they need to get from you or what you can get for them. And during that time, after you get that information, you're going to create a quote. Once you sent the quote to them, you're now in the presentation stage. You presented the quote to them, and you're going to go back and forth in terms of changes to the quotes, adding products, removing products. Once they accept your proposal, you'll move from the presentation stage to the activating transition. This is where you're finalizing the details of the deal with the customer, and if everything goes right, you're closing your opportunity as one. Once you close an opportunity as one, it's going to move into the close stage. That's just a default setting, so that way you know that the opportunity is closed. One important thing to note is you can close an opportunity as lost if the customer decides that they don't want to purchase from you. You can close it as lost at any point during the opportunity process. You don't have to wait until activating transition. You do, however, have to wait to that point to close it as one. Now we're going to jump back into CRM, and I'm going to walk you through a lead to opportunity sales process. So as you can see at the top here, we're already in sales, so I'm just going to click our dr carrot drop down. We're going to go to leads. So now we have that lead that we talked to. And her name was Christina, and she's very interested in our products, but we want to talk to her first to make sure she's a good fit. So when we create our lead, we're going to enter her name, first and last name, and her company name. Her company name is Towing. Her job title, she's the Director of Operations. And then we want to make sure we put our email in here because we want to be able to have a way to contact her because you can't always get through to somebody via the phone. So her email address is kf at towing.com. And then we want to make sure we have her business phone number. We want to have two ways to get in touch with her. So we enter in her phone number. And if she happens to give us her phone number or fax, make sure you ask for it. They may not have it or be willing to give it out at this point, but that information is there to be entered. The next step you want to do is department. Department is very key because that drives many different parts of the system. So if we're talking to Christina and she determines, okay, 
she's actually going to be buying from our fuels department. That, that's where we feel like she's going to fit, especially for this opportunity. So if we type in fuel and hit tab, it's going to pull up our fuel department. In our industry, she's a distributor. Now, you, it defaults us to a warm rating. This can be changed. So it's a, if it's a very hot lead, you change this to hot. Or if you're not really sure if she's going to qualify, you can change it to cold. Now, lead source. Lead source is driven off of department. Many times we set up for our various marketers different lead sources that come up for different departments. That's why it's always important to hit department first, then lead source. So if you enter your lead source, then enter your department, it's going to clear out your lead source and you'll need to re-enter it. So at this point, we're going to do other, and it's going to bring up another session to enter what the other lead source is. We're going to enter trade show. And we want to make sure we capture Christina's address, her business address. So if she's at 123 Willow Lane, and she's in Appleton, Wisconsin. And then we're going to put in her zip code. This is important information because this will carry over to two different places. This will carry over to the towing account that will be created once we qualify this opportunity and to Christina's contact record. So now that we have all the information from the customer, we're going to click Save. Very important to hit Save first because this Qualify button is locked down until you hit Save. So now we've talked to Christina and we feel she's a perfect fit. We're going to change qualify to yes. Now we want to make sure we save this. So we're going to click save. Once you hit save, then hit next. Once you hit save, it's going to qualify. You don't even need to hit next stage. It's going to start the process of creating that account, contact, and opportunity. And as you can see here, that flew through. That created those two accounts in about two seconds, where if you if we didn't have this process in place, each creating each one of those on on your own takes minimum five to ten minutes. So there's twenty minutes of savings in your day right there just by hitting a save button. Like I said, we are all about making sure we create efficiencies in your day. Now as you can see here, the potential customer came over as towing, and because that's clickable, towing is now a customer in CRM. Same with Christina. She's now a contact in CRM. Department pulled over as fuel. So all that information that we spent time putting in, you can see how it's pulling over into our opportunity, creating less work for us to enter the information. Now as you're talking to the customer and you learn how much um, they spend in a year on, on fuel, you're going to enter this information. So in our case, they spend about $10,000. We know our gross profit structuring, so that's probably going to be about $5,000. And they're going to order roughly 500 units. The reason this is important to enter is because of all those charts and dashboards. You can see what you have coming down the pipeline, what you're expecting to close, and your estimated close date. If you feel Christine is really hot on this. She wants to buy this soon. I can close this by the end of the month. I'm going to put in 8.30.16 as my close date. So we're going to save this. Now, our most important thing here to move on to the next stage is to make sure you set your first appointment. So if you set your first appointment as yes, you create the activity, click next stage. That will automatically save everything you've done and your next step is to create the quote as I showed you in that sales process we're now in the part where we're getting their needs and solutions we're talking to them understanding what they want so now that we understand what they want let's create a quote for them right down here right in the same opportunity is the quote section just click the plus sign it's going to bring up a quote screen for us now, in our quote screen, I want to make sure you enter the effective from date. The effective from date, so if we want this to be effective today, we're going to do 8 4 
and then we're going to choose a price list. You have to have an effective from date in order to put in the price list. Okay. Then we're going to set our proposal to be valid for 10 days. We want this to be a quick turnaround. We want to give them incentive to be per to, to get this quote approved. Payment terms. We're going to go with a net 60 payment term. And we want to add the Chevron supplier logo. So here in, in supplier logo, we're just going to type in Chevron. And we're going to hit tab. Automatically going to pull in that supplier logo. As you can see, the account and our contact pulled right over, as did our opportunity. That's why it's so great to create this information right from the opportunity, because all this information pulls in for you. Same with department as fuel. Now, I talked about this before, about scope of work, and that's a really neat feature. Scope of work, what this is, is it's a disclaimer. It's, an, it's information that is a set disclaimer that you can add to the bottom of your quote. Now, let's say the disclaimers that are available aren't exactly what you're looking for. You can click New. This will bring you right to a new scope of work screen. It's a really, really simple screen. All you're doing is giving it a name. So we're going to name this Mike's Disclaimer. Department. This is the most important part. So you notice we've been talking about department and how it affects various different areas. Our department's fuel. We're going to create a scope of work that's going to apply to this quote. We want to make sure our department is fuel. So if we tab down and then we click on fuel, enter back in our name. Now the last thing we need to do is add in our description, what's actually going to show at the bottom of our quote. And, and for our circumstances today, for a scenario today, excuse me, we're going to just put in California regulations. Because a lot of things that I've seen for scope of work is putting in state laws or state regulations. So then you just click on save and close. And what's fantastic is see scope of work went right to Mike's disclaimer. So once I created it, it's putting in here, scope of work description, California regulations. Now, if you wanted to put any quote comments in here, um, thanks for your time today. You can put that information right in there. If you wanted to put more information about the products, you can put that right there as well. Now, we are finally to the point where we can add products. One of my favorite buttons is the add multiple quote to products. In our scenario, we're going to add three products to our quote. So if you know the, the quote, uh, excuse me, if you know the products that you're looking for that you want to add, you can type them in here. For our, for our scenario today, I'm just going to click search, which is going to bring up everyone. And I'm going to pick three of our products. I'm going to click add. Let's see, I can add them all at the same time. It's going to pull in the product name, the ID, the package size, and the price per unit. Click OK. A way to verify that this worked, scroll down to quote products. They're all right in there for you. And now we're going to save. Now, you, you know, you feel comfortable with this. You've gotten manager approval if needed. This is a quote that's ready to go to the customer. You want to activate your quote. So you click activate. Now what this does is it moves this into a read-only field. I cannot edit any of this information. It's locked down. And that's because I'm ready to send this to the customer. Now to send it to the customer, click on these this overflow menu, these three dots, click on run report, and quote print. This is the most effective way for this to come up every time. And again, it's churning all this information and putting it into a visual layout for you. That's why it takes a little bit of time. As you can see here, it brings up our Chevron logo right here at the top. To put in our quote ID that is valid for 10 days, it's going to be presented by me. So my information is right in here. All the information from our screen, Christina Felchlin, she's put in the, in the system right here. We didn't enter a phone number or fax, so it's not going to show. 
That's the importance of putting in full and complete information. And then it's going to add our products. And as you can see here at the bottom, that's where our scope of work pulls in, is underneath your products. Your quote comments that we put, thanks for your time today, that's going to appear above the quote products. Now, because we activated this, we don't have a draft watermark going through the center. That means it's official. Now, if we wanted to save this as a PDF and send it to the customer, we just do save, PDF file. Now, let's say we talk to the customer and they want to add a product. All we do is click the revise button. What it's going to do is it's going to close this quote. It's going to open a new one, copying everything over, and it's going to make our revision ID 1. So by that change, it's a new quote in terms of CRM. Then you can make all the edits that you'd like and activate the quote again and send it off to the customer. Each time you need to make a revision, you'll do the revised quote, and it will change the revision ID. Now, once we're done with this, we just hit Save and Close. And it's going to bring us back to the quote screen. And a really simple way to get back to your opportunity is to click on Fuel Towing. So now we've created our quote, and we did it in CRM. So we click Yes, CRM, and we're going to move on to our next stage, which is our presentation. And as I was explaining, we've gone through our revisions. We've gotten it narrowed down to exactly what the customer wants. We've gotten the approval. They love our quote, and they want to move forward. So we're going to click to enter, and we click Yes. Now, throughout this, if we've added products and, you know, hey, they're actually going to purchase more than they, they anticipated. So we're, we're going to update our estimated information. Ooh, too many zeros there. It would be great if they bought 7,500 units. As you can see here, as our sales stage has increased, as we moved along here, the sales stage right here has also been updated. So now that they've accepted our proposal, we're going to finalize the deal with the customer. So as we're having the conversations and they say, yes, I am ready to say we are going to be purchasing from your business. You're going to hit close as one, change this to yes. Now, a couple things that I really want to point out that are really great here. The close date automatically knows it's today, fills that in for you. Your actual revenue, that estimated revenue, gross profit units pulled over here. So you don't have to fill them in. If you've been keeping it updated, it's going to pull over correctly. If for some reason you didn't keep it updated or it changed since the last time you updated your information, just make your update. Click any description, why they purchased from you, what the main reason was, and then your status reason is one. Then you click OK. It's going to change this to a status of one. As you can see here in the bottom right, it's read only. You cannot change anything. So if, you, if you're thinking back, oh, shoot, I forgot to update um, the contact. It's no longer Christina. She moved on from the company. It's going to be John. You're going to click reopen opportunity. It's going to process, and then you simply change your contact. And then back in activate and transition. Change it from to no and then back to yes. And then enter your information again. Click OK. And now it's closed as one. One thing to note is the close as loss button in the upper ribbon is going to be there at all times until you close it as one or close it as loss because it's now a done and complete opportunity. And we're back on our opportunity screen. What we're going to do is we're going to jump back into our presentation. We went through our quotes. This was the scenario that we went through for our proposal. And I left this information in here. Uh, so if you wanted to test this or apply this knowledge to your own CRM to make sure you understand the process, I've left this scenario in here for you. Now, activities. Heard me talk about this throughout the opportunity. You're going to create activities, you know, to follow up with the customer. When you set that first appointment, you want to make sure that you set a an appointment up, either a phone call or an actual appointment with them. And then as you're sending them the quote, create a task to create the quote, 
create phone calls to follow up about the quote. There's a lot of activities. I know um, as salespeople, it's activity driven. Your, re your managers are really looking at the number of activities you've worked on. The same for yourself. You want to know, hey, did I put in a lot of activities to this? Or was I not, did I not follow up with the customer? Is that why um, they're not moving forward? Gives you some analytics knowing how much, uh, how many activities you did per opportunity. Now, there are several ways to create an activity. And I'm going to go into the activity entities and I'm going to show you exactly how to create one and the various types. But the various ways to create an activity, there's an activities entity as I showed you under workplace. So you can create one from there. Through the record of the activity it will be associated to. So if you're looking at an account or if we're looking at that field opportunity that we're just working on, go into that opportunity and you can add an activity right from there. Or if you're doing an advanced find of your activities, there's a new button right in the ribbon. So I'm going to jump back into CRM. And under our fuel towing, this is a, a open opportunity that I have. So within the opportunity, open activities, which is about the middle of the screen. If I click this plus sign, it's going to give me all these different drop down options. So if I wanted to create a phone call to follow up with Christina, it's going to pull in the call to is coming to her, and it's going to say the call is coming from me because I'm the one creating the activity. Now the subject is to follow up on quote. So now I have this set. I've sent the quote to her, so I want to follow up on my quote. So I want to set a due date. I sent the quote over on 8-4, so I'm going to give her a couple days to review it. So on 8-6, I'm going to follow up with her, but I'm not going to follow up with her till the end of the day. So I'm going to change this to 3 p.m. Gives her today, tomorrow, and most of the next day to talk with who she needs to review it, uh, come up with any questions that she has. You put any description in here, you can add a phone number, the phone number you're going to call. So in this space, we're going to add her business phone number. And as you can see here, it's regarding that opportunity. So then we click Save. And now it's in our activity section. So we're going to save and close. Now it's 8, 6, to 3 p.m. We haven't heard from her. We want to follow up on the quote. So we're going to open up our activity. We place our phone call. The very important information is that whenever you pick up the phone and place a phone call, mark it complete. That way you're getting credit for completing that activity. Now let's say you talk to Christina and she says, I'm reviewing your, I'm reviewing your proposal right now. I should have an answer. I got to talk to my boss to get a final determination in terms of our budget. And if this falls within it, I'll get back to you on Monday. So you do complete and follow up because you completed this task, this phone call. So what this will do is it's going to complete that activity. It's going to create a brand new activity. It's going to set the due date for a few days from now. You want to make sure that this matches up to what you stated. So if you're going to follow up with her on 8-12, you change your due date, you change your time frame, so if we're going to call her at 9.30, so now it's due date at 9.30. Follow up on quote, yes, you are following up on the quote, so all this information is accurate. So then you click save and close. Then if we go back to our opportunity, what you're going to see here is you're only going to have a one open activity. Follow up on quote. That's the follow up activity that you just created. Now, a really great tool is the activities entity. So, if we go to workplace and then activities, you have a my activities view. And what's really cool is underneath it, you have a do. So, if you do today or earlier, it's going to show you any overdue activity that you have 
and all your activities that are due today. And you most likely want to follow up with your overdue activities in case it was yesterday and you ran out of time to follow up with them. You want to make sure you hit on those first. So this is essentially a to-do list for your day. And as you can see, there are various activity types. We have appointments, we have sales calls, we have tasks. And up here in the upper ribbon, you also have an e email task. Most of you will be utilizing are utilizing the Outlook client. The Outlook client, when you track or set regarding an email, automatically creates an email activity. If you're currently not using that, I do definitely recommend utilizing the Outlook client. But you can create an email activity right in CRM. An appointment, an appointment also connects with the Outlook client but you can create one right in CRM and it can sync down into your Outlook client. Your phone call, that's the one we were just working on. Letter and fax are not really used, so this is if you sent a letter to the customer or sent the fax. This just clarifies the type of activity you did. Service activity. Service activity um, is for the service entity. Again, not one that's used very often. Same thing with campaign. It's more for marketing purposes. Then you have other activities, which is a sales call. So if you want to specify that this was more of a sales call instead of a follow-up call, you can specify that information by clicking sales call. Now we're going to jump back into our PowerPoint. We're going to talk about accounts. So I'm going to go back into CRM, but first I want to go through what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the account number, where that's located, and what's very unique about it. We're going to talk about various fields that are populated by the data load. There's a rolling 12-month product summary report, which is a really great tool to use. Suggestive cell, one of my favorite features. Suggestive cell essentially is set up by um, the management team. They work with us and we help set this up for you. But once it's set up, if there's a specific product segment that your customer is currently purchasing, if you click Suggestive Sell, it correlates that to another product segment and the various products you can offer them. That way you can do some cross-selling. The billing information section, I'm going to go over that. Fuel pricing notification, not a widely used feature. But I want to show you, if you are using, using it, how that affects accounts. And then the originating lead. As we talked about in the sales process, when you qualify a lead, it creates an account. So you always have that tie back to the originating lead. So we're going to jump back into CRM. And we're going to go to Sales, Accounts. So I'm going to click on... 120 JWS. So 120 JWS, see they have an account number. This means that this account is set up in your back office system. That means that this information is, and you see all of these locked fields here, these are all the fields that are affected by the data load. All this information is update, updated by your nightly data load that takes information from your back office system and populates the account. The account number is what ties the two systems together. So if you ever see a CRM account only, that means it only exists in CRM. They haven't been in your back office system. Once they are, the data will start flowing down from your back office system. So as you can see here, there's a lot of information that is covered by the back office da uh, data load, including your billing information. So the credit rating, the credit limit, their current payment terms, so what they use when they purchase. This is great information. The price list they use and the currency. So if you're overseas and you have different currency, in most cases, it's going to be U.S. dollar. Now, for fuel pricing notifications, as you can see here on the right, send pricing email now. So if you're utilizing fuel pricing notification and you want to make sure you're sending this to JWS, you're going to change this to yes, and then you set an expiration date. So if you only want to, you're talking to them 
you want to get them interested if they're a prospect customer. So if they're a prospect customer and you're doing an opportunity with them, you can set it for 10 days giving the fuel pricing notifications. That might get them to purchase from you quickly and close that opportunity faster. So you can start sending them fuel pricing notifications and set the email expiration date right there. And then the rolling 12 months product summary, there is a lot of data that goes into this. So it does take a little bit of time to load. So as you can see here, it's saying, please wait. It'll generate this information. So I'm going to touch on a few other things, and then we're going to come back to this. I'm going to go to the originating lead, which is actually at the top of the screen. So I'm going to go back up and go to our originating lead. And in this case, there isn't an originating lead. This account happened to be pulled into the system from your back office system or originally loaded when you set up the oil and gas product. Now, if there was an originating lead here, you could click into this originating lead and pull back into the lead and review the information. So it'll tell you, okay, hey, what was the lead source that, that brought JWS to us? You can look back at that information. And then suggestive cell. So if you click on suggestive cell, it's going to bring up the various information. So product segment, okay, so additives. So that's the product segment that uh, suggestive cell is saying I should sell to them. So if I pull up, okay, so the products is the rock drill. That's how you utilize this. So if you click on furnace, click on furnace here, and you put in the description here, and it kind of gives you information of suggestive cell of which specific products they're looking for. So there's three different product segments based on what they currently buy that will pull out the products associated to those. So for furnace, there's four different products. Now if you talk to them, you try to cross sell them, and they're saying, you know what, I'm not really interested at this time. You can snooze this for a couple months. So snooze it until October 1st. And then give a reason if you'd like. And then when you hit OK, this will not show up until 10-1. Back on 10-1, it will give you that suggestion to sell those, the various products within additives. Next, we're going to talk about competitor share of wallet and the estimated days between orders. For this purpose, I'm going to go to Fairview Manufacturing. So within Fairview Manufacturing, so you see at the very add share of wallet competitor. This is a great tool. I love this tool. If you're talking to the customer, and you know, hey, they're, they're a very loyal customer. They're buying quite a bit from us. But by looking at the share of wallet, you really know, hey, they're not buying a couple of product segments for us. You start talking to the customer. You're trying to get some information as to why they're not purchasing these items from you. So you click on Add Share of Wallet Competitor. You want to look at Fuel. And you want to look at Antifreeze. And you're talking to your customer and you're asking them, who do you buy your antifreeze from? Oh, we buy it from Ben's Oil. Do you mind telling me about how much per year they're per you're purchasing from them? The reason I'm asking is because I might I might be able to beat their price. I just want to see if you're interested. They say, oh, we, we purchased about $10,000 worth in a year. You're most likely not going to know their gross profit because you don't know Ben's Oil's gross profit rate how they're structured, so you can just simply click zero. You have to fill that information out because it is a required field. Now volume, if you ask them how many units they're purchasing per year, and they say 500. Now talking to the customer, they're letting you know, you know, Ben's Oil was really great when we started working with them, but their delivery times, that they're not working quite as well as they used to. You see an opportunity to steal this business from Ben's Oil. This new opportunity checkbox, click new opportunity, add competitor. What this is going to do, it's going to add the share of wallet competitor information right down for you. But it's also going to create a new opportunity. 
So if we go down into opportunities, we click on our list icon. It's just going to load all the current open opportunities for Fairview Manufacturing. So that can take a little bit of time because it's pulling the information from a separate entity. So as this pulls up, I'm going to go back to account screen because I want to make sure I touch on a few items quick. So if we go back to our recently viewed and click on Fairview Manufacturing, one thing I want to make sure I touch on for you I apologize, the system's running a little bit slow again just because it's rolling up a new a new account that we've jumped into and it did quickly load our rolling 12 month product summary. I wanted to make sure I touched on this for you. So these are all the products that Fairview Manufacturing purchases. So this is the rolling 12 month product summary. The total revenue and total gross profit of each product. So it's a really great snapshot that you can take a look at right in the account screen. So right here is our opportunity that we just created via the share of wallet competitor. As you can see, all of our information pulled over. So that way you don't have to recreate the information. It takes everything that we entered and pulls it into an opportunity. And if you have them on the phone, you can continue selling and move right through the sales process. The other fantastic feature of the competitor share of wallet is at the bottom of the account screen. And wait for this to finish loading. It's right here, share wallet competitors. So the way you add a share wallet competitor is through that add SOW competitor button at the top. And if we sort this by department, we look at fuels, antifreeze, Ben's oil, our information just populated right here. So now our share wallet competitor information is entered. Now, if you want to know, how does that affect our share of wallet? I know they buy they buy fuel from us, and I know they buy some antifreeze. If I jump over here to fuel antifreeze for our share of the wallet, I can click into this, and it's going to give me some fantastic analytical data. So as this is loading, again, because it's pulling up some really great charts and information pulling from different areas, it takes a little bit of time to load. Now one thing to note is our share of the wallet is pulled from order history. Order history drives what our revenue year to date is. The competitor revenue is again pulled off of the share of wallet, the competitor share of wallet that we entered. And it's still loading our charts here. So all that information is showing right here in these fields. And that information is then pulled into our revenue by type. So as you can see here, our, we don't have much of the share of the wallet. We only got a small sliver of the revenue. So the opportunity you just opened to steal that business from Ben's Oil is going to be huge in giving us more share of the wallet. Looks like we have a pretty good gross profit structure. So our gross profit chart, we're a little bit we're closer to even. Same thing with volume. And again, this is test data, so some of this may not look realistic, but this is based on the test information that's been entered into our test environment. So we're going to go back to our PowerPoint. And again, we just touched on competitor share of wallets. The reason it's so important is because it captures that competitor, the department, the product segment. And then if you feel like you can win the business, it's creating that opportunity with all that information already in there. It's putting in the revenue, the gross profit, the volume in the estimated section. It's setting the department, setting that product segment for you. So it's doing all that right away for you and it's adding that competitor. All those fields that you filled out pulls right to opportunity. Less work, less duplicated data entry. And then these charts are fantastic. It gives you a great deep dive analytical look at your share of the wallet and what you can do to gain more business. Next we're going to take a look at estimated days between orders. This is a great feature 
I love this. To utilize this feature, and I'll show you this within the account section, is you can enter the estimated days between orders. So this is you for all your accounts. This could be um, a time where you're reviewing your accounts or getting ready for the upcoming year. And if you're noticing that you haven't entered this information, it's good to take that time, understand your accounts ordering patterns, and say, you know, they, they tend to order for me every month or they tend to order for me every three months. Put that information into your account screen. And then I'm going to show you Dashboard 12, and some really great features of that dashboard. So if we jump back in here and we go back to Fairview Manufacturing, we're just going to click back. It's going to open up our Fairview Manufacturing screen. And right now our estimated days between orders is four. So Fairview Manufacturing orders from us all the time. Now let's say that hasn't been happening lately and we need to adjust this and that's more like 30. So we change this to estimated days between orders of 30. Save that information. And once it's completed saving, I'm going to go to sales, utilizing our drop down, and I'm going to go to dashboards. And we are specifically looking at dashboard 12. So in this little carrot drop down next to leads dashboard, I'm going to go to dashboard 12, which is my accounts past estimated order days. There are some really, really great information in this screen. Because this is a test environment, however, I'm going to uncheck the my accounts and show everyone so you have a little bit more information to see. In your case, you would have this, this button checked. So the big information in here is your the name of your account, the days overdue, the estimated days between orders, and their last order date. The account number is very important too because that ties back to your back office system. So if we pull this information up, and I'm just going to sort this so we have one that has a last order date. So in this information. ABC Sales, their last order was on 4-10-16, so almost four months ago. Now, however, they order every 30 days usually, and it's, it's been quadruple that. So I really need to make sure I get on the horn with ABC Sales and, and find out maybe if something's happening, if there's a changeover happening in their company, or um, if they're going to a competitor. Uh, understand why they haven't been purchasing from us because it's 86 days over their estimated days between orders. So they haven't ordered from us on over 100 days. I want to make sure I get on the horn with them and hopefully get a sale out of it. So this really can be a great to-do list in terms of calling your customers that haven't placed their orders in a while with you. Another great list type in here is accounts that don't have an estimated days between orders set. So that one that we set for Fairview Manufacturing is 30. This list is going to show all my accounts that I don't have that filled out for. I haven't been doing a very good job. I don't have many that are filled out, as you can see here. So I'm going to want to make sure I jump into each one of these opportunities and I set that date. So this is a really great opportunity for you as a salesperson to utilize a chart to keep your data up to date. Again, I'll hammer it home one more time. CRM is only as good as the information that you're putting in. And this is one of those fields that's very important to fill out. And then it gives you a to-do list without needing to do anything. Just running, just navigating to Dashboard 12. It gives you a to-do list right here of customers to follow up on and get orders from. Now we're going to go back into our PowerPoint. Next, I want to talk about the contact screen. The contact screen is created right from that sales process. So from lead, that lead. So Christina Felchlin is now a contact. And so I'm going to show you why full and complete data is important, the originating lead and how it ties back, and also the send pricing email. There's a section in the contact as well. So we're going to go back to CRM, 
and I'm going to look up Christina. So here she's in here, Christina Felchlin as a contact. As you can see here, here's my originating lead. So if I want to know any more information about where Christina came from, why she's a contact, I just simply click on the originating lead. Brings me back to her lead screen that's been qualified. And I can see, okay, she came from a trade show. Okay. And if you have some more information about the trade show, when it was, you can also add to that information the other lead source. That gives you an idea of where she came from, why she was purchasing from you. Look at the description if you filled that information in as to why she's interested in coming to your company. All that information is right there. So then if we go back to Christina, the contact, as you can see here, a lot of this information pulled over from that lead screen. We didn't have to enter it. This is all system generated. As we learn more about the customer, if we learn, hey, she's got a mobile phone, you know, she's on the road, times she's 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 an operations manager, so she's going to be on the road at times, or she's going to be very busy and needs to be reached. She might give you her mobile phone. So we're going to enter her mobile phone. They have fax. I know fax is starting to go away and not used as much, but um, she may have a fax number that she wants to give you professional information, the department she's in, her manager, um, those various pieces of information. Personal information, so if you're talking to her and you want to know, you're, you're just talking, you know, hey, oh, she's married, okay. So she's married, I want to make sure I update that. Uh, she told me her spouse's name is John, so enter in John. As you get this information, obviously you know she's female. The more information you have, the more analytics you can do. Also, when you pull up Christina to call her, and you happen to have her birthday in here, and it's 8-3-16, and you're calling her today, 8-4-16, you can wish her a happy, a belated happy birthday, builds that rapport right away. So that's really the importance of having full and complete information. So then we're going to save that information that we just had, and I'm going to touch on one last item. See here, it's a send pricing email. Change this to yes. If the account is marked yes, and the, and this particular contact is marked yes, so if chose R us is marked to receive a fuel free notification, and Christina is, Christina will be receiving that email. So that's a very important piece. We're going to save our changes, and we're going to jump back into our PowerPoint. Last thing in the day in the life of a salesperson is order history. Order history is loaded in the CRM to the nightly data load. It's loaded from your back office system. So it's very important. So if for some reason you place an order today and you're wondering why you're not seeing it in CRM, it'll be there the next day. It's because it's done nightly and it pulls the information from your back office system. All the order history information is driven from your back office. Order history is a tool that analyzes your customer's ordering patterns. And that's the reports, charts, dashboards, advanced find. And guess what? We're gonna be talking about these reports and charts and advanced find next. So data at your fingertips. There are various, various different data reporting methods. There's advanced find. Advanced find and views go hand in hand. Advanced find is simply a view that hasn't been saved. You're usually going to use this one as a one-time data set. If your your boss came to you and he goes, "Hey, I I want to know what customers ordered between January 1st and February 2nd," that's a one-time data set. It's not dynamic. Now, however, for a view, if you want yourself, what opportunities do I have closing in the next 30 days? And I want to know that. Every time I log in, every time I go to this view, I want to know what the next 30 days looks like. That's dynamic because it's always changing, always showing the next 30 days. And also, if you're going to review that data set frequently, advanced find is really meant for a one time pull. A view is meant to be reviewed frequently. A dashboard, you're viewing items graphically, puts it in charts, list form. Um, you can combine like data sets 
or charts, put them into a dashboard. There's six different areas to put information, so you can combine them. You can do a comparison. So if you want to create a chart that shows opportunities by owner, so you can compare owner versus owner and how many different opportunities they have or opportunities you've closed by account. You can look at that kind of information. Reports. There's a report wizard um, function in which you can create reports. This allows you to put data set and groupings. So if you have various different industries that you want to that you work with and you want to know which one is buying the most from me, you can run a report and group it by industry and then do a numerical value which sums it up. Which basically says, okay, the actual revenue of my opportunity to group it by industry and then sum for each industry how much they purchased from me in the past two years. And then it'll give you a grand total all the way at the bottom. You can do charts and data together. You can embed a table into a chart. So if you click on a chart, it'll pull up a table. Or you can just have a chart and the table information below it. Now, custom reports are very, very important because that's the enhancement work that we do here at Legendary Partners. Those enhancements that we roll out, um, those are those can be custom reports. And so when you see new reports or report, you know, 220, report 100, those are custom reports that we create. And a time to know when you're going to be probably need to use a custom report is if you want to make the report more appealing. So that standard functionality, that standard look of report wizard, you want to add color, change fonts. Usually that's used for like an annual meeting. That's when you're going to want to use custom report. If you're utilizing calculated fields, so if you're rolling up um, the order history to an account, that's a calculated field. And if you want to compare those, that's going to require customization. You can filter anything before a report is generated. Um, we're going to go that, into that next with reports. But if you want to filter it after that report is generated, that's custom. Customized charts. So if the capability within the report wizard or for dashboard is not, um, not what you're looking for, it'll probably be custom. Columns not related to the data. Um, in Report Wizard, and you've probably heard me say it a lot, um, the logic of CRM can usually only go about too deep. So it can look at items that are connected to each other, but if you're looking at items that are not entities that are not related to each other, you're going to need a customized report. That can pull columns that don't have a connection. So order history to lead. There's not a direct connection to those, so that would require a custom report. It doesn't fit within the logic of CRM. Or related records with no data. A great report Steve and his team put together is um, opportunities or, or accounts with no open opportunities or activities. That's custom because what you would be asking CRM to do is to look for an, uh, take an account and then look for an opportunity that doesn't exist. It's going to get confused and go. You look. You want me to find something that doesn't exist? I can't do that. That's why a custom report is generated. When you're not going to use a custom report, is when an advanced find, a, a view, a dashboard, or a report would generate that information for you. So reports. There's two different ways to pull reports. There's dashboard 97 and workplace reports. That's just your standard reporting section within CRM. Dashboard 97 is best for long-running reports, so where you're pulling a lot of data, a lot of information. What it will do is it'll run in the background and then send you an, an Excel file. Filtering is broken down to specific fields. Um, when we go through an example, I'll show you the filtering and how it differs from a workplace report. Uh, as I said, it emails directly to your email. It's set up in CRM under your user. And two reports with some additional grouping options is Report 170 and Report 360. Workplace reports, however, there's more reports to choose from because they're not just long-running reports. More intuitive filtering options. Simply what I mean by that is it's more similar to Advanced Find, what you're standardly looking at in terms of filtering. And you can choose where to send it, as an Excel, as a PDF, in Word, 
where Dashboard 97 is only Excel. So we're going to walk through report 100 and I'm going to show you how to do the filtering and what it will look like in terms of when you click submit. It will send the email to you so I'll walk you through the process until you hit submit. So if we go into sales and then we go into dashboards and then when our dashboard drop down comes up after loading all of our dashboards Again, there's a lot of information, so there are times where um, CRMs will take a little bit longer to load certain screens. So we're going to click our drop down, and we're going to go to Dashboard 97, Report Request. And we are looking at Report 100. So our first little drop down that um, Report Request is going to give us once it loads here, and I'm just going to refresh because it, it didn't. It did not load our information. Again, we've been doing a lot in the system here, um, and we're jumping between screens, so this can have an effect in terms of taking a little bit longer to load. So simply refreshing will um, allow us to get our information back. So we're going to wait for this to load. And again, I'm really excited about this, about talking about reports and advanced sign with you. I think this is the as I said before, the dessert portion of today's webinar. So if we click on report and we do report 100, which is our account ranking, choose how to display this. So we're going to go for revenue. As you can see here, the start date. Um, under the workplace report for report 100, it's in a separate section. This is all in one section, which is definitely a nice feature. So if we wanted to do August 5th, 2015, to excuse me, August 1st, 2015 to August 1st, 2016. Then we can choose if there's a specific account that we want to look at. We can do that. In our example, we're going to leave all the owners open. Um, we're going to leave all accounts. Excuse me. We're going to set the owner actually to equal myself. So if we scroll down here. And again, there is no equals current user, so you do need to find yourself in here. So scroll down to Michael Dodds. I'm going to go down to order history. And I'm going to set my department to clean burn, fuel, and lubricants. And then I click. So that's kind of how the filtering works. Where um, in the report, um, excuse me, the workplace report, it looks a lot like advanced find, where you can choose from all the fields that are available and it has drop downs to choose or look up fields but these are all checkboxes and then you would click request report it's going to do processing report request and then in probably about five minutes you'll receive an email with an excel file for report 100. next we're going to go into workplace and we're going to look at reports so these are the standard reports that you're um, that you're used to seeing. So Dashboard 97 is, we've been adding more to it recently. In this case, we're going to look at one of my favorite salesperson reports, and that's Report 220. It's an order analysis report. This is a really great feature. So for our filtering, as you can see, it's much different. So we're going to set the owner to equal current user. And we're going to do this just for order history. So I'm actually going to delete the account owner, and I'm going to set the owner to equal current user under order history. I'm going to set our department to equal fuel. So all I did was click on select and go to department. This automatically came up with equals. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to type fuel and hit tab. It will automatically find it for me. And then if we click run report, we're going to do the last six months. So I'm going to do 2, 4, 16 to 8, 4, 16. Then I'm going to click View Report. And a really, really great feature about this is there's so much information, such a deep dive that you can go in. So in here, and the salesperson is pulling from the account screen. 
So while the order history owner equals myself, the account owner is Steve. So that's what that column is. So as you can see here, a really cool thing is it's going to show you your gross profit and your revenue. And then it calculates that and it shows you a gross profit percentage for that particular product. So for this product, this order ID, this order date, it's showing you, okay, they purchased this much in volume. This was the cost. This was the price. So it's fairly similar. And our gross profit was 16.65%. So that's a really great feature. It gives you a really deep dive into the order, which is great. Uh, it's going to show you the product. So I'm going to show you the product ID and the actual product that they ordered. So they ordered 50-50. Dello, they ordered quite a bit of it. So that's a fantastic feature to really do a deep dive into your into your orders by your customers, so you can figure out what they're buying and how to get in front of them and possibly get them to buy more. We're going to close down our chart here, and then I'm going to jump back into our PowerPoint presentation. And as you can see here, this this shows you the filtering that I used right here on the right and then some of the key features of Report 220. Next we're going to talk about Advanced Find. In my opinion, Advanced Find will be your best friend. It allows you to gather the data you need and gives, you, gives that data a voice. You are empowered by Advanced Find to give that data a voice. And what I mean by that all the data is in there in CRM if it was entered. What Advanced Find allows you to do is to filter to what you want and then only show the important information. So if for order history you want to know gross profit only instead of revenue, it's pulling that information out. So it gives you that power to give it a voice. Now there's some best practices and tips for views. Um, there will be a time when you come up with zero results. Don't panic. Go back and analyze your filters and comms. Remember that related entities have a connection back to the current entity. So remember when we went into originating lead, lead creates an account contact and opportunity. There's a related connection. If you added a column from a related entity, so if you're an account, and you want to pull a field from leads, so the lead source, you can't sort by lead source. And you'll be unable to add a column of advance to advance find if there's not a relationship. So if there's no direct relationship between you know, lead and order history, you're not going to be able to add that column. And if there's a one-to-many relationship. And what that simply means is if you've ever noticed when you do a an account and you want to add all the contacts to that account it won't let you because there's only one cell for that account and there could be hundreds of contacts potentially keep your views clean um, I run into this myself you can um, forget that you've created the view recreate the view and then by the time you know it you have 20 personal views where you only need five so keeping your views clean is very important Views can be changed and updated through Advanced Find, but only, they will only be personal views once you save them. You can update or you can change a system view and save it as a personal view. And then you can always change and update an existing personal view. Next, we're going to do an Advanced Find demo. I'm going to jump into CRM and we're going to go through this demo. So if we click on our Advanced Find button, and one thing to note that's very important, you want to set this look for to the entity you're creating, that you're getting the information for. In our case, it's opportunities. Our scenario today is you want to create a priority list of your top opportunities to follow up with. The list will have the following characteristics. The opportunities will be in the needs and solutions or the presentation stage. They're going to have a completed appointment, email, or phone call activity. And then the estimated revenue for those opportunities will be $300,000 or more. Or the estimated close date is within the next 30 days. 
So if we start with an opportunity, we're going to look at the sales stage. So if we navigate the sales stage, equals, click our little three dots here to bring up our options. We're looking at needs and solutions or the presentation stage. And this is pulling information from deeper within CRM. That's why it's taking a little bit of time to, to come up here. So once this finishes loading, we'll finish doing the advanced find. So we're in needs and solution and presentation. So all I did there was simply double click them and they pulled over to my selected views. Click OK. Next we want to look at the estimated revenue. So if we look at estimated revenue, and we want this to be over 300,000. So we go is greater than 300,000. Our other condition was or if the estimated close date is within the next 30 days. So if we do estimated close date, and all I'm doing here is simply typing in the first few letters and then scrolling down to my field. So estimated close date, if we do next X days, X is 30. Now, now in our scenario, it's estimated revenue or estimated close date. So we select each of these rows, we click group as or. So that means the sales stage has to be in needs and the solutions. And then either the revenue has to be over 300000 or the estimated close date needs to be in the next 30 days. It does not have to be both. Next, we're going to look at the regarding activities. So let's go to activities regarding. And we want an activity that has a status. So, excuse me, activity status equals, and we're going to click our options here on those three dots, and we want it to be completed. So we click completed, click OK. And then our activity type, because we want a completed appointment, email, or phone call activity. So we do activity type equals, and then we're going to take a look at our options. Our options are email appointment or phone call. So this is a very, very specific scenario. So then if we click result, and again with test data, there's, there's probably not going to be a lot of information that fits this criteria because this is test data um, and it's not kept up to date as much as your personal CRM information would be. Next we want to make sure we put in our correct columns. So we click on edit columns. We're looking for opportunity topic, the account name, and if we have account name, if we click account, and then we want to make sure that we add the sales stage. So if we scroll down to sales stage, and we have sales stage do not use, so sales stage is already in there. And then we want to add in estimated close date and estimated revenue. So we have estimated revenue. Again, these are also already in there. This is just a double check to make sure everything is existing. So if we remove estimated units, we have sales stage. We have potential customer. So we have topic, potential customer. Then we have our sales stage, our estimated close date, and estimated revenue. So the owner we're not interested in, the department, all I'm doing is simply clicking on them and clicking remove. So opportunity type and brand. And close description, because these are ones that will be closing. Couple things we do want to add is we want to add the contact and their business phone number. So we're going to click on account and we're going to scroll down to contact, click OK. And the reason I needed to do contact and then come back and do contact phone is because I need to change my record type to look at potential customer contact. And I'm going to look at their business phone.
there's a lot of A's in here. So click on business phone and then email. And click OK. So then we're going to move our contact up to by potential customer. Same with business phone and email. All I'm doing is highlighting them and clicking the arrow button. Now that we have our column set, we click OK. And then we click results. And again, with very specified information. Um, again, in test environments, you're not always going to come up with that information. But what we want to do is we want to share this information with our other coworkers. We want to make sure that we set the owner of these opportunities to equal current user. So owner equals current user. That's one thing we want to make sure we do. We're going to save this as my opportunities. So we highlight this and delete the existing. So my opportunities closing in the next 30 days or high revenue. And then click Save. And one thing we're going to do with this is we're going to share this with one of our coworkers. We're going to share this with Josh. So one thing to note to, to share any views, your look for must be set in the entity that you're sharing a view for. So if we click Save Views, so we're doing My Opportunities Closing in the Next 30 Days or High Revenue, check mark it. Click on the Saved Views list tools, click Share. Click on Add User or Team, because we're sharing it with the user. Type in Josh, click Enter, select his name, click Select and Add. Now for Josh, I'm going to give him Read and Write Access, excuse me. That way he can view dashboard or view the view anytime you're sharing anything they have to have read access and now I'm going to give him the edit access that way he can change this view to fit his needs but I don't want him to delete all my hard work assign it and I really only want to share it with him so I'm going to click share I'm going to share the same view now there's nothing that automatically notifies Josh that he has a new view this is um, something that you as the user would need to notify him of. So this will share, go through, and now this view has been shared with Josh. So we're going to close out advanced find. And next we're going to talk about charts. Excuse me, next we're going to talk about um, other advanced find capabilities. Within advanced find, when you get results, you can bulk edit items in advanced find. You check mark a, a listing of records, you can make the same edit to all of them. You can assign multiple records. So if you run a, a list of all records owned by Josh and they need to be assigned to John, you just select all of Josh's records, set the filtering to bring up that information, check mark all of his records, and click assign. And I'll go in CRM and show you this. Then you can also deactivate and activate records only if that option is available and only if you have security access. And that's usually going to be for accounts and contacts. You can send emails. If your email configuration is set up to send emails, and this is usually going to be for contacts or accounts, ones that have an email address associated, and then you can run reports on your particular view. So it takes that advanced find criteria, pulls it into the report, and runs it. So we're going to jump back into an advanced find and I'll show you how you can do that. So if I go to accounts, I'm just changing my look for to accounts. So if I go to look for accounts, I'm going to use a save view and that's going to be my active accounts. And I'm going to click results. So if I wanted to edit all my records, I hit this check mark at the top. It, everything in this 250 list I can edit at once. So I click it. If I add, wanted to add a description to this of test, now what's going to happen is, is that all of these records are going to have a test description now. So if I hit change, and that's how you bulk edit. 
I'm going to hit cancel because this is 250 records that it would be updating and that does take a little bit of time. So I'm going to hit, hit cancel. I'm going to go back to our advanced find. And then if you wanted to send a direct email, this is where you would hit that information. Um, activate and deactivate. Again, I highly recommend against deleting it because you lose all information and then all associated information. If I wanted to assign these to a different user, I can click assign. It's going to bring up options. I can assign them to me. These are already assigned to me, so I don't need to. So then I change this to user or team. And then I choose the team, click assign, and it will assign them out. And then you can run a report as well. So run report, and then you can choose all the various reports. So those are the other features of Advanced Find. Next we're going to talk about charts. Um, we're going to create a chart of opportunities. We're going to break down the data by estimated revenue and sales stage, and then I'm going to show you the drill down capabilities. And you can utilize some charts, you can utilize the same chart for all views across the entity that entity. So if we're doing it for opportunities, you only have to create the chart once and then every view under opportunities can use that chart. And then sharing the chart with a coworker is a great way to prevent recreation of the wheel. So if it'll apply to them, I re recommend sharing it with them. And I'll show you how to do that. So if we go back into advanced find and we go into sales opportunities. And we go to charts, and I click. In my scenario, I'm going to break down the data by estimated revenue and sales stage. So if we go here and we do topic, and we do estimated revenue, I add a category, and I add sales stage. So what this will do, if I click save, and then click close. I'll show you what this will look like. So what this is doing is it's showing my revenue. And actually, I want to make a quick edit to this. So if I click here and I do edit chart, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to sales stage. Excuse me, I'm going to change this to estimated revenue and this to sales stage. Key important markers are making sure you're setting your legends correctly. So it'll really change how your chart looks. So then if we click save and we close our chart, you can see here it's going to show my estimated revenue totaled up for qualify. I don't have anything in needs and solutions under my opportunities. My presentation's looking pretty good. Activate and transition looks good. And it's nice that I have them in Qualify, but it's only in Sales Stage 1. The ones I probably care the most about is this 250000 between these two. That's pretty important. And if I change this to all opportunities, I don't have to change my chart in any way whatsoever. It's just going to change the data, which is very important. Now, if I wanted to drill down into the Qualify stage, excuse me, into the presentation stage, I just simply click on presentation. I change my field. To look at estimated close date. So I click a presentation, estimated close date, and click the arrow. Now this is my presentation stage broken down by the estimated close date, by month. So for my presentation, looks like a majority of mine are closing in March and May. Again, this is test data, so we're looking at previous information. And then to share a view with a custom, uh, with a coworker, excuse me, if you want to click on this little home once you drill down, it'll bring you back to your originating chart. Click share. Click on add user or team. And I'm going to share this with Josh. So it's the exact same as sharing a view. And then we share it with Josh. I can just give him read access, click share, 
Now the chart is shared with Josh. Next we're going to talk about going mobile. The iPad app is a fantastic application and it's included with your oil and gas subscription. As I mentioned before, um, being a salesperson going on the road, it's huge to be able to look at your information about the customer before you go into a sales meeting and then be able to update your notes once the sales meeting's done. And one thing that's always tricky when you're selling yourself as a, as a traveling salesperson is how connected you are back to the home office. You can show that to the customer by showing them the iPad app, how connected you are. You can also plan your sales trips. There's territory management, and you can do this for your own because you're loading your own accounts in to the iPad app. You can plan your sales trip with territory management. The b best practice to sync it morning and night. So sync it first thing in the morning and sync it last thing at night. That way the mo you're getting the correct information into CRM and the information from CRM is pulling into your iPad app. That way you're always connected and always have the most up-to-date information. The app only works on iPad. It's not available on the iPod, iPhone, or a tablet. The importance of logs. If you ever run into an issue, it's very important to send us the logs. And I will show you how to do that here in a minute. But it's very important to send us the logs. That way we can troubleshoot the issue and get a resolution to you faster. Now how to sync. In your main screen, if you swipe to the right, you'll find the sync button. If you click sync, it'll bring up this screen right here in the middle. Click these little um, phones with dotted lines connecting them. That's your sync icon. Those two items will start syncing. Uh, um, it'll start syncing with CRM. Once it's done, you can watch the progress bar, but once it's done, you're synced. How to send logs. If again you scroll to the right to the settings section, which is just which is just two past sync, click settings, scroll about to the middle, it's gonna show a thing that says send logs. Click send logs. As you can see here in the screen, right here, send logs. And CRM support will be pre-populated. Send that information to us. We will get it in our CRM support box. It will be a text file with troubleshooting information that will help us resolve your issue quickly. Next, we're going to touch on the Outlook client versus the web client. And this is our last item for the day. I'm, heard, I'm sure you've heard me say it many times before. I am a huge proponent of the web client because of how much efficiencies you get out of it. However, I think a hybrid model is the best way for Outlook client and web client. Utilize the web client for all your daily tasks, everything, your activities, um, the sales process, running charts, reports, dashboards, everything for CRM, do in the web client. But utilize the tracking for emails and appointments. That way it's not cumbersome to recreate those emails in an email activity in CRM. So the Outlook Client Pros are, like I said, you can track and set regard emails and appointments. It's very convenient. You're already in Outlook, so it's simple to use. You can see who the email is associated to. It'll say at the bottom, regarding, and it'll show that person. You can click right into their record. Outlook Cons, not as efficient. There's lag time little bit of clunkier navigation. I'll go through a quick demo and I'll show you. It can cause Outlook to crash. That has happened. We can fix this for you, so please just contact CRM support. We'd be happy to resolve this. It opens records in a web version, but it doesn't have any of those navigation efficiencies I showed you at the beginning of our training webinar today. The Web Client Pros, it's efficient. All those navigate efficiencies are there and they're there to help you save time. There's faster load times, it's more intuitive uh, UI, which is user interaction. Um, it's more up to date with how people, how um, web applications are, are utilized today. Outlook is more based back in an older time period of how um, web applications or software looked. 
of client cons, you cannot track and set regard emails. That's why I recommend the hybrid. So I'm going to jump into my Outlook and I'm actually going to show you how to track and set regard an email. So I have a test email here. If I wanted to set regard this in my, in my CRM, so I wanted to track this email and I wanted it to appear in my activities in CRM. I wanted to associate this to Fairview, set this to accounts, I search for Fairview. Have them checked, I click add, and what this will do is it will start to track and then it will notify me once it's completed syncing, it will notify me that it's tracked. The other item is to just simply click track. What this does is it puts the email activity into CRM, but it doesn't associate it to anything. In this case, you would just hit track. Once the syncing completes, it will be tracked in CRM and you'll be able to locate this activity. A couple of best practices for the Outlook client. I touched on utilizing the Outlook as a hybrid client. That is is my preferred method. That's how I currently utilize it. Set the sync with CRM at the shortest amount of time allowed. The amount of times that are allowed are set by your administrator. So I'm going to jump back into CRM. If I go to File, CRM, excuse me, Personal Options, and I do synchronization right down here at the bottom schedule automatic synchronization with Outlook minimum allowed minutes is 15 so I have it set to the minimum then you just simply click OK utilize set regarding instead of track this is because it automatically associates it to the record in CRM if you're working in a record and you have emails that are regarding something you're working associated them allows you to keep track of that information later on once the opportunity is closed you can see all those activities troubleshooting the outlook client the following are signs that the outlook client needs troubleshooting outlook is crashing when it's opening the track and set regarding buttons are grayed out when accessing crm in the outlook client it states trying to connect to crm any error messages that you receive always make sure that your email is so the email you use in Outlook is the same email address under your username in CRM that's important of clean correct information so when we set up the users for you um, having that correct email address that they're utilizing today is key if your email address ever changes please let us know in the lower right corner I'll show you this in just a minute it says online with Microsoft Exchange. It should say connected to Microsoft Exchange. Or your CRM look, link is not showing in the lower ribbon bar. So that would look like this. See it says connected to Microsoft Exchange and energy training is right here in my lower bar. Next we're going to do a demo. Uh, we've already done creating an activity um, in the web client. I'm going to show you how to do this in the Outlook client. And this way you'll see the different navigation experience, load times, efficiencies or inefficiencies between two, and how the Outlook client interacts with CRM. So if I go into energy training, and this is how the navigation goes right here. So if you go into energy training, it's going to start with all of these closed. So if you go into sales, then into activities. Sometimes these are intuitively labeled, um, so you would be looking for something and it might not be in that location. Now, as activities loads up here, you can create your new activities. So, if we wanted to create a new task, we click task, and this is how it interacts with CRM. It's going to open this in a CRM browser. Now, as you can see, no advanced find, no quick create, no recent viewed, no navigation drop down. It's all removed in the Outlook client version. 
So now we're going to label this as um, create a quote. Create quote for Christina. I'm going to set this to regard. I'm going to set this to regard toe. Excuse me. Toes are us. So once we have this set to our regarding, at this time we'll just go to fuel, and then we're going to click save and close. So now this has created our activity, and it's going to go back in under my activities. Now as you can see here, there's more scrolling because our viewing screen is much, much shorter, so we run into those issues. So that's how it interacts with CRM. That's how you would end up working with the system, working with Outlook and how it interacts with CRM. To mark it complete, you can either open the actual activity or you can simply select it here and click Mark Complete. And it's going to bring up a little pop-up window for you. Set the state to completed, close. Now it'll move out of your open activities. Thank you everyone so much for your time today. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you about all the great training items and great uses of CRM. I look forward to talking to you in the future. Have a great day.